Does God promise us healing from our physical sickness, from a disease or from something that's happened to us? Is it true that God promised us that if we pray uh, and that if we're also maybe anointed with oil, that we will be healed? Well, there's a promise, a guaranteed promise there. But in my understanding, I think it's doubtful for us to believe it should be doubted that he's speaking about a physical healing. Now, let's go to the passage in question. This is going to be James chapter 5, verse 13. You've seen this passage before. It says, if any among you suffering, then he must pray. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed any sins, they will be forgiven. Now, why don't I see this as a physical healing where others do? Uh, why do I see it as a spiritual healing? That's how I take this. Well, before we go into it, let's go back to the very beginning. And we won't have to start, even start in verse 1 of chapter 5, but let's start at around verse, uh, I believe it's around verse 7. And so he says, therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. So let's understand what's happening here. Uh, the farmer waits for the precious produce of the soil, being patient about it until it gets the early and late rains. You too be patient, strengthen your heart for the coming of the Lord is near. Understand what's being spoken of. This is obviously speaking of them being rescued, them being saved. Do not complain, brethren, against one another so that you yourselves may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing right at the door. As an example, brethren of suffering. Now, this word suffering, we're going to see also when we get to James 13, 14 or James 13. Uh, so as as an example, brethren of suffering and patience, take the prophets who spoke the name of the Lord. We count those blessed who endured. You have heard of the endurance of Job and have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings, that the Lord is full of compassion and is merciful. So we kind of get a picture of what he's speaking of. And so when we get to verse 12, specifically 13 and 14, as well as the rest of James 5, we can kind of get an understanding of what he's speaking of. He's speaking of the coming of the Lord and the salvation of his people. But as, but above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but your yes is to be yes and your no is to be no, that uh, you may not fall under judgment. Is anyone among you suffering? There's that same word for suffering. Now, is it speaking of a physical suffering, of a spiritual suffering? Well, I guess it can go either way. Uh, then he must pray. Is anyone cheerful? And by the way, I think that if you're suffering either physically or spiritually, I think that you should pray. He is to sing if anyone is cheerful. Is anyone among you sick? And here's where we get to it. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, a couple things. Typically, I think there's only one other time that we see anointing someone who is sick. As a matter of fact, there's as, our, as far as I can remember, there's only one other time that I can think of where someone who is sick, where oil is used for that person. That's only found in Mark 6. Let's go there real quickly. Mark 6, 13. And they were casting out many demons and were anointing oil with many sick people and healing them. Now, some might even say, Corey, is it also possible that the sick or the healing that's happening here, that these are not necessarily a physical healing, but a spiritual healing. That's also possible. Either way, if this was a physical healing, this is the only time that we see anointing someone with oil for someone being physically sick. Uh, typically, we see someone being anointed with oil in terms of a sanctification process, someone kind of being set aside and being shown that they are part of whatever the it is that they're being made or anointed for. Uh, we do see this something like this in with the Good Samaritan, but here he's not anointing him, and we're not sure what the oil is, but he says that he, as he bandaged up this person that's entered on the side of the road, uh, he bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. So this isn't the same as someone being anointed. This is just someone having uh, these, whatever the oils are, and wine being used for medicinal purposes. Is this the same thing for James 5.13? Is anyone among you sick? He must call for the elders, and they are anointing him with oil. Is this oil being used for medicinal purposes? Again, we really don't conclusively see that. So if you take Mark 6 as oil being used conclusively for or as an example of uh, medicinal purposes, fine. Uh, but it can go either way. But the reason why I think that even more so this should stand for a spiritual healing is 
what we see next. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who was sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven. And so is this where if a person is sick, then they not only get healed physically, but their sins are also forgiven? Well, that doesn't really make sense, does it? Think about it. Our sins are forgiven if the person has placed their faith in Christ. That's why I tend to believe that this is focusing on someone who is spiritually spiritually weak, spiritually sick, because oftentimes, uh, and almost half the time is really, uh, a little slightly more is this word used for sick, is it used for a physical healing. However, once we get past the Gospels, the way we see sick typically used is going to be used in, in Acts and in the epistles, it's typically used for a spiritual weakness because the word that's used here, let's go back to the screen, the word that's used here for sick, this word uh, in the Greek is asthene, which is, it can be strength, I mean, it can be sickness, but it also can refer to someone being weak. And we'll go to that in a second, but notice what it says. Then he must call for the elders of the church to pray over him, anointing with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer offered in faith will restore him. Now, before we go back to this, I want to go over to the law of God, and I want to pull up something. I want to look at this word for uh, for being sick. As a matter of fact, let's go to law of God. Let me go back over here and type in uh, James 5, 13. Now, and I know depending upon which commentary you look at, different lexicons are going to refer James 5, 13 probably to being a physical sickness, some uh, spiritual being weak. But let's look at this word here. The word that's used here is... Asteneo. Now, I want to click on the part for weak. If we click on this, I want to show you some passages, and I want to show you how this word is used to convey not a physical sickness, but a spiritual weakness. So we click here, we go to uh, Acts 20, 35, and everything I showed you that by working hard in this manner, you must help the weak. The same word that's used there. How about in Romans 4, 19? Uh, without becoming weak in faith, he can he contemplated his own body. So in this case, the word that's used there, same Greek word, is used to refer to someone who is of a spiritual weakness uh, or just being weak in the spirit. Uh, for what the law could not do, weak as it was, Romans 8, 3. So here it's speaking of a weakness, not a physical weakness. Same thing with Romans 14, 1. Uh, he says, now accept the one who is weak in faith. Well, the weak in faith, obviously, clearly is not re referring to someone who is physically weak, but this is a spiritual weakness. So now let's go back over here to uh, back over to accordance and let's go back to this passage because there's something also that needs to be brought out. So before we continue, the possibility of this word can be either for a physical sickness or can be for a spiritual sickness. Here's why I don't think that it is for a physical sickness, something that is guaranteed here. In verse 14, I'm sorry, verse 15, and the prayer offered in faith, the prayer offered in faith. Now, if you think of a prayer that we offer in faith, if it's a spiritual weakness in our sense, in other words, us not being saved, that prayer offered in faith will do what? It will save us. Okay, that's important. But what about someone who is physically sick and they offer a prayer in faith? Will it always save them? And I say always because look what it says. The prayer offered in faith will restore. The word that's used here in the Greek is sose. Now, this is a future active indicative. And so this is stating that this will happen, which is why the English conveys, conveys will. You will be saved or you will be restored. This word for sose is the word for to save. And that can mean a physical saving or a spiritual saving. But here, if it's physical, well, then what's the guarantee? The guarantee is that this prayer offered in faith will save or will restore the sick one. The problem is that doesn't always happen. Even today, when we see ourselves, we feel like we have pray, uh, faith and we pray for someone or someone's being prayed for. That doesn't always result in healing. And even if we look in the Bible, there are people who had faith, Paul and so forth, who had faith but could not heal people. Timothy was not healed. Trophus was not healed. Paul himself, whatever his issue in the in the in the flesh was, thorn in the flesh was, was it a physical healing, whatever? He was not healed from that. So there are times where we see people who we know have faith offer a prayer up and it doesn't work. Now, is it that Paul 
or these other people did not understand what James was saying? Are they are they oblivious to this? Or now some might even say that this writing here is for James specific audience and it only applies to these, let's say these Jewish co converts who are here. Is that the case? And so only this is applying to them. Well, that's kind of hard to, to imagine because amongst them would also be Gentile believers as well. So that's kind of hard to, uh, uh, to to make that point that he's only speaking of a certain group of people and it's only applicable at that time. He says, though, the prayer offered in faith will restore. So if the prayer offered in faith is in terms of saving someone who is spiritually weak, well, that happens 100% of the time if it's offered in faith in the name of the Lord. But physical sicknesses, that does not happen. And so we've got a problem with the wording, not my wording. It's just the wording that uh, James gives us. And he says, and the Lord will raise him. And if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven. Again, if this is a prayer of faith in terms of being saved because they're spiritually weak, they are not saved. Well, then the sins that they've committed will also be forgiven. But a physical sickness, that does not that doesn't necessarily equate that that physical sickness uh, being healed will also result in their sins being forgiven. The only way that sins are forgiven is if you place your faith in Christ, a true, genuine prayer of faith. The prayer offered in faith in the name of the Lord will do just that. And the effective prayer of the righteous man can accomplish much. And so I think that is the point here. If anyone amongst you, you people, amongst the believers, and I use this word amongst because we go back to verse 13, we see this, this phrase, is anyone among you, tis and hemun, if anyone that is among you. So among who? Amongst the believers. And so I think that this understanding that I'm bringing works perfectly. There is nothing to explain. Even though there's a large portion of people that take this to mean a physical healing, it doesn't make sense because why would he say of anyone among you and the way he writes this uh, is probably best understood any among anyone who's not necessarily of you or from you, but around you, surrounding you. Uh, if anyone amongst you are sick, well, people who are believers can be sick as well. And then we see this also brought up again in James 5, 19. And again, understanding what James 5 is speaking of, he's speaking about the coming of the Lord and the salvation of his people. So then why would he make this switch? away from that. No, it seems to be in keeping with the salvation of the people and those who are amongst you who are spiritually weak, who are not saved, the prayer offered in faith will save them and their sins will be forgiven. That's why I take this passage. And there are, there are those who do. Um, I wouldn't say that this is the majority opinion because it's probably not, but it's the one way, it's the only opinion that works perfectly. And we don't have to try to rationalize or reconcile when this doesn't work. Well, was it not faith? Was it the wrong oil? Was it the wrong elders? No. In this way, if you offer a prayer in faith, you will be saved. Amen.